Filipina clinical instructor of Holy Angel University. So this we, we have some discussion or description about some enteral and parenteral route. We have the topical ointment which is usually being used for some skin irritation or rashes. And then we have the buccal administration which the medications are usually being absorbed between gum and cheek. And then we have the sublingual, so definitely the absorption is, with, is under the tongue. And then we have the parenteral route. First, we have some discussion about the intradermal, which is being done by a nurse or student nurses in a 10 to 15 degrees, and usually being used for skin testing in any hospital setting. And then we have the subcutaneous, oh, which is being done by a nurse, within the 45 degrees angle and then uh, the absorption of the medications are usually within the adipose tissues. And then we have the intramuscular which is a, the, uh, done by the nurse within the 90 degrees of angle and then usually the absorption of the medications are directly within the muscles. And then we have the intravenous uh, usually for some IV medications and for the easy absorption of any medication for the patient. A route of administration in pharmacology and toxicology is the path by which a drug, fluid, poison, or other substances is taken to the body. Routes of administration are generally classified by the location at which substance is applied. Routes can be classified based on where the action is. Action may be enteral, parenteral, or topical. So later on, we'll be demonstrating on how to administer the different routes properly. But as nurses, we are also involved in both dispensing and preparation of medication. Research on medical administration errors shows an error rate of 60%, 34 mainly in the form of wrong time, wrong rate, or wrong dose. There are many ways to prevent medication errors, and one way of which is understanding the 10 rights of drug administration. Right drug, right patient, right dose, right route, right time and frequency, right documentation, right history and assessment, drug approach and right to refuse, right drug interaction and evaluation, right education and information. Okay, let's start. Enteral route is administration through the gastrointestinal tract is sometimes called enteral or enteric administration. Enteral administration usually includes oral through the mouth, sublingual placed under the tongue, and buccal against the mucous membrane at the cheek. Oral administration is the most common, least expensive, and most convenient route for most clients. In oral administration, the drug is swallowed. The major disadvantages are possibly unpleasant taste of the drugs, irritation of the gastric mucosa, and in some cases, harm to client's teeth. In buccal administration, a medication is held in the mouth against the mucous membrane of the cheek until the drug dissolves. The drug may act locally on the mucous membrane of the mouth or systematically when it is swallowed in the saliva. In sublingual administration, a drug is placed under the tongue where it dissolves. In a relatively short time, the drug is largely absorbed into the blood vessels on the underside of the tongue. The medication should not be swallowed. The parenteral route is defined as other than through the alimentary or respiratory tract, that is by needle. Some of the common routes for parenteral administration are subcutaneous into the subcutaneous tissue just below the skin, intramuscular into a muscle, intradermal under the epidermis, and intravenous into a vein. Some of the less commonly routes are intraarterial, intracardiac, intratical, epidural, and intraocean.
An intradermal injection is the administration of a drug into the dermal layer of the skin just beneath the epidermis. Usually, only a small amount of liquid is used. This method of administration is frequently used for allergy testing and tuberculosis screening. Common sites for intradermal injection are the inner lower arm, the upper chest, and the back beneath the scapula. Intramuscular injections are absorbed more quickly than subcutaneous injections because of the greater blood supply to the body muscles. Muscles can also take a larger volume of fluid without discomfort than subcutaneous tissue can, although the amount varies among individuals, chiefly based on the muscle size and condition and the site used. Among the many kinds of drugs administered subcutaneously are vaccines, insulin, and heparin. Common sites for subcutaneous injections are the outer aspect of the upper arms and the anterior aspect of the thigh. These areas are convenient and normally have good blood circulation. An intermittent infusion is a method of administering a medication mixed in a small amount of IV solution. The drug is administered in irregular intervals, such as every 4 hours, with the drug being infused for a short period of time, such as 30 to 60 minutes. Two commonly used additive or secondary IV setups are the tandem and the piggyback. The topical route. Topical applications are those applied to a circumscribed surface area of the body. They affect only the area to which they are applied. Topical applications include the following. First, dermatologic application applied to the skin. Second, installations and irrigations applied to the body cavities or orifices, such as the urinary bladder, eyes, ears, nose, rectum, or vagina. And lastly, inhalations administered into the respiratory tract by a nebulizer or passive pressure breathing apparatus. Medications may be administered to the eye using irrigation or installations. An eye irrigation is administered to wash out the conjunctival sac to remove secretion or foreign bodies or to remove chemicals that may injure the eye. Topical skin or dermatologic preparation include ointments, paste, creams, lotions, powders, spray, and patches. But before applying a dermatologic preparation, clean the area with soap and water and dry it with a patting motion. Vaginal medication are inserted as creams, jellies, foams, or suppository to treat infection or to relieve vaginal discomfort. 
Medical septic technique is usually used. Vaginal creams, jellies, and foams are applied by using tubular applicator with a plunger.